In today's Take of the Day, I want to talk about Eric Bledsoe and why he might be the most unpredictable player in the NBA. Now, before we get into that, though, please like, subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell just so you get the newest and the bonus content first. We put out content every day so you won't miss any content here. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. So when I talk about Eric Bledsoe, I talk about a player that a lot of people look at and say he has a lot of potential. And he does. He always has. I mean, even from it doesn't matter what team he's been on. You can see his potential and you can see how <clears throat> his potential can help him rise to occasions that can make him a formidable player in the NBA and a really, really good, solid player in the NBA. And I feel like the rep that he's gotten over his career has been an up and down player and somebody that just really isn't consistent and somebody that you really can't rely on. I mean, he's had injuries. I mean, but what player hasn't? So you can't can't really fault him there but at the same time you got to look at Eric Bledsoe and say to yourself man this guy you don't really know what to expect out of him and when you watch him play you know at times you shake your head because you're like man you know what why did the Clippers go after this guy why did they let Patrick Beverly go for this guy why why this why this why that why that you know what I'm saying it's always why questions with a player like Eric Bledsoe because when you look at him from night to night you just wonder where where is his talent gone or why isn't he putting all his talents on display because he definitely has the the talent to do so and he definitely is one of them type players who can explode uh who can make big plays and who you know who can do good things for a team he just has uh something about him where it doesn't allow him to do those things consistently but i mean when you look at his talent and the, the way he plays or how he can play at certain nights you you look at him like wow okay this is the type of guy that this team can utilize if they can get this out of him nine nine times out of ten but that's the problem with Eric Bledsoe a lot of nights you can't get what you you can't get his potential out of him a lot of nights it's just sometime every blue moon every now and then here and there you know it's just it's it's not good enough and this is the this is the reason why I say he might be the most unpredictable player if you look at last night's game versus the Miami Heat I mean that was a well put together game by Eric Bledsoe he had over 20 plus points he in the plus minus he was like probably like a plus 14 on the floor I mean he was he he was probably Probably the best player on the floor last night in the second half of that game because you know he well I say into the first half going into the second half of the game I mean he really was a spark for the Clippers I mean it really wasn't even Paul George I mean if I had to give somebody the player of the game last night I would have to go with Eric Bledsoe because the shots that he made and the aggressiveness that he showed going to the basket at Bam out of Bayou at some of their other uh players and you know big men in the paint he really wasn't discouraged and he really wasn't scared of the moment and this is the type of Eric Bledsoe that the Clippers envisioned getting the first time they had him and they didn't get that they got it at times in certain nights inconsistently but it wasn't fluent enough for them to keep him and now hopefully this time with the Clippers you know he finds his way a little bit better and finds his footing now these first several games into the season I would say he wasn't I would say he wasn't playing up to standard if you ask me I would say he was playing pretty well you know or some nights he had moments where you know he would kind of you know do some things but it wasn't really good enough to put together a full good game like last night to me that was the that was his best game of the season no doubt about it and it might be the best game of his you know in in the last few years for him because when you looked at last night the Miami Heat not only had a big lead in the first quarter but they really was in control of the game and you know when Eric Bledsoe came in start getting to the rim getting to the basket making some really good passes once he got into the teeth of the defense right in the lane in the paint area I mean it's like the Clippers whole energy turned around once he got going and if they're going to get that type of contribution from Eric Bledsoe so when Kawhi and the rest of the crew comes back, they're really going to be a dangerous team because it's like if you can get that type of production out of a guy like him coming off the bench or whatever he does when Kawhi and the rest of the crew comes back. Now, most teams are not going to be prepared for that because most teams look at Eric Bledsoe the way most fans do. Very unpredictable. Um, he, he's a here and there guy. He has his moments where he looks like a, a star type player in the league. And then he has moments where he looks like, you know, he got called up from the G League because the team needs to fill a roster spot. 
And that's just the way it's always been with Eric Bledsoe, at least the last couple years anyway in his career. And um, the crazy thing is, you know, he's always averaged somewhere around, you know, 16 to 20 points a game for the most part, you know, in his career. So he's always been a solid player. It's just that when you look at games like last night, you just feel like he could be more, a little bit more than a solid player. He could be like a star type player in the NBA, you know, but um, games like last night seem to come a dime a dozen for him or should, excuse me, should I say games like last night come far few in between for him so it's like you really kind of don't even expect Eric Bledsoe to follow up what he did last night going into next game but you know maybe this time being with Ty Lue and the Clippers and the way this team is constructed and how they play and how they're implementing their their system amongst every player in that locker room Maybe being on a winning team around guys who really care about each other, who want to win, maybe that will propel him to or maybe that'll bring that type of game out of him more nights than not. And I could tell you, if the Clippers have him playing like that, coming off the bench or coming into the game, well, the Clippers will definitely be a playoff team and they might be a little bit higher seed than six or seven. They might be a little bit higher. They might be around about where they were last year if they can continue and Paul George can continue what he's doing, even though I need Paul George to you know, once again, I love the fact that he's scoring 25 plus points, but I need him to shoot more efficient. I mean, I'm telling you, because when you go against these good teams, when everybody's healthy, you're going to have to be more efficient. If Jimmy Butler was there last night, the Heat probably wins that game. And I hate to really say that, but it's probably true because, I mean... I thought going into that game, it would be close, you know, the whole time. I didn't think Miami could even build a, f- a 14, 17 point lead that they did with just Tyler Hero and Bam and uh, Kyle Lowry. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't see Bam scoring 24 points at halftime. I didn't see Kyle Lowry turn into a shooting god in the second half. And I, ain't, you know, I didn't see Tyler Hero knocking down big shots you know, uh, in, in key moments to try to get them to, you know, bring them, you know, back with the comeback. I thought maybe, you know, the Clippers defense would neutralize Tyler Hero because they would throw different, you know, players at him, in which they did for the most part. I'm not going to say they didn't, but that was my prediction in my head. I said, I figured they would neutralize Tyler Hero and maybe uh, Bam would probably have about, you know, 20, 21 points for the game. But I mean, the way Bam was playing in the first half, I thought he would end up with 50. But the whole point of the thing, the point of the the thing is, when you look at Eric Bledsoe and how he played, you just think in your mind, well, why can't he play like that most nights along with this team? Because they would be way more dangerous and they probably would be like 10 and 1 if Eric Bledsoe played like that consistently. And that's what you ex- that's what you think about Eric Bledsoe when you watch him play. You're excited for games like last night, but you don't want to get too high because it's like, Man, he might go back to being the other Eric Bledsoe, which is like a failure or which is the player that a lot of people look at and say, ah, man, I'll pass on him, you know, or something like that. But, you know, last night showed, you know, a lot of his talents. I was really proud of what I saw. And um, I liked I liked him getting to the teeth of the defense. I liked him making the passes that he made. He made some really good passes, some dime passes, some passes that, you know, the defense wasn't even prepared for. And, you know, him getting in to the paint is really easy because, I mean, he can bring breakdown on defense he can get past anybody and when Eric Bledsoe's three-pointer is falling when that's falling and, and going in well he's even more of a dangerous weapon than what most teams have on their team coming off the bench or in their starting lineup as the third or fourth best player fifth best player on the team or whatever you want to call it so um you know, shout out to the Clippers, you know, for getting a big win. But um, like I said, they, they've got to be encouraged what they saw from Eric Bledsoe. But I'm pretty sure they want to be more encouraged by seeing that more consistently. And I hope that he does find a way to, his, to get his footing and be more consistent for this team, because I feel like the Clippers deserve a break. You know, I feel like the Clippers deserve you know, an opportunity to be in the finals and, you know, have the, the 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 type of team and the type of depth to get over that hump. You know what I'm saying? Because they're one of them teams who never got over the hump in their in their uh uh, you know, lifespan in the NBA as a team. And, um, you know, this could be the season if they get everybody back healthy and, um, you know, go ahead and make a run for it. Of course, I think the Warriors are going to be standing in their way along with the Lakers, especially the Warriors, because I mean, the Warriors are a well oiled machine look like to me, even without Klay Thompson and James Wiseman. So when they add them to, wow, they're really going to be tough, even though they're 10 and one or 11 and one now. But uh, I still think the Clippers can make a huge run for the playoffs and everything, especially with Eric Bledsoe playing like that. 
because honestly, if you're going to get rid of Patrick Beverly, you need Eric Bledsoe to play like this because you want your money or you want the, the, the thought in your head of, well, we let Patrick Beverly and Rondo go and we got back a piece that's younger than both of those players, but got a little bit of both of those players in him. You see what I'm saying? And that was the thought process. And like I said, last night was, you know, a, a prime example because him knocking down a three, you know, getting into the teeth of the defense. That's like that's that's what Rondo does and makes passes when he need to, even though Rondo's a better player than Eric Bledsoe overall in career. But that's what Rondo is good at doing. And, you know, playing a little bit of defense. And, you know, getting up into guys and not being afraid to defend on the other end to try to make plays and cause turnovers. Well, that's what Patrick Beverly did. So this is what I'm saying. It's almost like they expect Eric Bledsoe to be a little bit of both of those players, like in one in one package. And uh, last night kind of displayed that, you know, so um, I hope to see more from him and I hope that he grows from it. I'm pretty sure Clipper Nation and the Clipper organization hopes the same thing because they they know he has potential. They knew he had potential the first time they had him back in the day with Blake Griffin and then when they was on the Clippers so now his second stint hopefully this is the charm for him and hopefully he gives the Clippers what they need going forward to help them to be uh, a more dangerous team than what they even are now but hey that's my take on the situation leave any comments in the comment section let me know what you think and uh hey you know Cali out